Well, I'm the eldest of the Smith family, other known as the Wilds. Um, my father, Marty Wilde, was one of the UK rock and roll pioneers. Why must I be a teenager in love? We had a lot of different music um, influences as we were growing up, and also I got to see my father uh, as a performer, so uh, I, I sort of fell in love with the whole idea of singing and, and entertaining. My brother Ricky is uh, just a year younger than me. When Ricky was about 11, um, he started uh, recording with my father songs that my father had written. He had a very good voice and he looked really cute. I am an astronaut. I am an astronaut. I released a track called I'm an Astronaut, which was um, number one in Sweden. Um, nowhere else, uh, thankfully. Um, but no, I had a, had a touch of success on that one. And then, um, but as I got older, uh, that's uh, well, I left school at 16, and uh, I joined my dad's band, uh, the Wildcats. Then he started writing songs, and then. Um... You know, my dad said to him, well, why don't you go and try a few of the record companies with this stuff? We want to go and see what people think about it, which he did. And he met Mickey Most at Rat Records and played him his, his demos. And Mickey said, yeah, come in and, and use our studio and, and see what happens. So then we started recording, but with me as, a, as the um, lead singer. And then um, I said... Uh, to Mickey, I said, is it all right if I, if I get, bring Kim in to do some backing vocals? She's got a great voice. And he said, oh, well, by all means, let's give it a go. So, yeah, so I just made myself very available all the time. And went out and bought a whole load of fantastic clothes from the King's Road. And I was determined when I walked into Rap Records, someone was going to notice me. And they did. <laughs> At that point, I wasn't actually producing it myself, that I was being produced by someone else, because I think Mickey thought I had a bit inexperienced, maybe, and a little bit young, I was only 17. And so he said, um, uh, he, I heard him chatting with, um, with the producer, and he said, I think we could maybe do something with him. And Rick thought, um, no, that's not going to happen. If anyone's going to produce my sister, it's going to be me. And literally, it was that motivation, that motivation to write me a song that, uh, that would change Mickey's mind. So, yeah, he, he went home that weekend. We were at home living with my mum and dad. He went home that weekend determined to write a life-changing song. And he wrote Kids in America. We're the kids in America. We're the kids in America. My father came up with the title and, and finished off the lyrics. And I remember I was... Because our bedrooms were next door to each other and he had a little wasp uh, synth box that he had. Um, was one of the most fortunate pieces of equipment that Ricky's ever had. That was kind of like a quite inspirational writing tool for me. The rhythm as well, it used to have a pulse to it, so you could have, and you could change the speed, so it could go da 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 or da 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 And I remember hearing this pulse going on in his room, and it was driving me crazy. And I thought, if he doesn't shut up soon, I'm going to go in, and whatever it is he's making that noise, I'm going to shove it down his throat. <laughs> And, um, but little did I know, he was writing a song that was going to totally change my life. When I got married to my husband, we um, wanted to have some children and I wanted to make them a garden. At that time, I'd um, retired from the music industry after having been in it for about 15 or 16 years. <laughs> and, uh, and all that passion that I put into songwriting, I put into the garden. I don't know, I was kind of bored of being Kim Wilde, really. And I, and I rediscovered who I really was in the garden. <laughs> you know that feeling when you're sort of demob happy? I, it was, um, we'd had a really intense professional year that year. Ricky and I went to a Christmas party and um, we got on a train to come home and I didn't realise how absolutely smashed I was. Because I don't know if you've ever had got to that point when you've had a few drinks where you, you think you can talk, 
but actually when you try it doesn't actually work and that's what happened to me on the train and then someone was filming it and the whole thing went viral and... Don't tell me We were like demob happy, that's what we were. That's the last I'll say about it. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear.